Hello everybody, my name is Ming. I'm here to tell you more about the SITNU or Newcastle University BH Honors Degree Program in Chemical Engineering. The subtitle is, uh, is it just about oil and gas? So hopefully towards the end of the presentation, you find that chemical engineers do not just work in the oil and gas industry. Uh, there are lots of opportunities for you. First of all, I uh, also like to clarify the difference between chemistry and chemical engineering. First of all, chemistry focuses on the synthesis of compounds, whereas chemical engineering deals with um, the design of the facility that will bring this compound into commercial fruition. Um, chemists deal in terms of grams, whereas chemical engineering deals with orders of magnitude larger tons. And the bridge between chemistry and commercial facility will be chemical engineers. In terms of how chemical engineering impact your daily life, um, without chemical engineering, you will not see all the stuff that's on the picture, that's the pictures on the right. So everything you touch in your daily life will have been produced by chemical engineers in one form or another. Okay, um, the SITNU chemical engineering degree uh, started in 2011. So um, if you join us in 2021, you'll be the 11th batch. But from 2011 to 2017, the degree was awarded by Newcastle University. Um, since 2017, uh, it's now a joint degree between SIT and Newcastle University. It's gone from a two-year program to a three-year program. That gives us a latitude to um, admit students who do not have a background in chemical engineering. Um, it also enables us to include this IWSP, which is the Integrated Work Study Program. In terms of uh, entry qualifications, these are it. We take in students with A-levels, IB, and polytechnic diplomas. <coughs> now, this is a three-year program, and depending on your qualifications, there are two entry points. You can enter in year one uh, if you do not have um, chemical engineering background, um, you will have to enter through year one. So if you have A-levels, IB, non-chemical engineering diploma, you will definitely have to start from year one. But if you have a chemical engineering diploma, um, you still have to meet certain entry criteria. Otherwise, you start from year one. If you have a chemical engineering diploma or an advanced diploma in chemical engineering, you may apply to enter directly into year two. So this is a three-year program, and if you qualify to enter through year two, you finish your degree in two years. Um, but there are certain conditions. You have to have a good CGPA and good grades in certain subjects. But there are, there's a caveat there. Uh, you still have to do some year one subjects like maths, computing and simulation, and careers and professional development. This is what uh, you'll be taught when you join us as students. That will be the fundamental stuff, like chemistry, maths, biomolecular science, maths and energy balance, and computing and simulation. I'd like to spend a bit of time talking about the computing and simulation bit, because um, our course is quite computationally intensive. You have to learn how to make use of Microsoft Excel. Um, you'll be taught MATLAB and Simulink. You'll be taught flow sheeting packages that people use in industry, like Unisim and Aspen Hisys. And you'll be also taught Python programming language, which is used in data analytics and big data uh, calculations. Once you've gone through that, um, we go through modules that are called, what we call core chemical engineering. Things like thermodynamics, heat and mass transfer, separation processes, etc. You also have a module in process safety because safety is very important in the process engineering industries. Then we have the enabling technology like process control, industrial automation, and process optimization where you learn how to uh, make sure that your plant or your process operate as per design and how to optimize them. And finally, um, you will be taught how to design entire process plants, okay? And how to uh, evaluate them for economic viability. A feature of our course, uh, this three Topics here, sustainability, clean technology, and renewable energy. Um, these three uh, aspects are very important in contemporary engineering cycles, circles, and they are embedded 
within all the modules that we teach. And supplementing all this will be your career management, career management and personal development studies, where you'll be taught by our career services people how to manage your career. Right? We, we encourage our students to think about the career the moment they enter the degree program. That's the integrated work study program, which I'll come to later. After three years or two years, you will graduate as chemical engineers and you join the workforce and you contribute to Singapore society. Okay, the structure of the program, uh, the SIT academic year is uh, broken into three trimesters. Each trimester is four months long and between each trimester, you have a two-week break. In the middle of the trimester, you have a one-week break. Okay, and then in year one, you'll be taught the fundamentals and then in trimester three of year one, you have a long vacation, four months, okay? Um, and then year two, you come back to year two and you get taught the core modules that we've talked about. And in trimester three of year two, um, COVID permitting, you have this overseas immersion program for three weeks in the UK. And when you return, you embark on your integrated work study program. The integrated work study program um, rolls over across the year three, and you, join, you come back to campus um, around January, end of January time in trimester two, where you complete your studies doing more core subjects and also the, do your final year design project. Okay, okay um, the overseas immersion program. You fly about 12,000 kilometers to the northeast of the UK to this place called Newcastle. Um, it normally takes place in the uh, second week of July, okay, and this is the place that you go to. This is Newcastle upon Tyne. Um, the river you see there is a river Tyne, so that's why it's called Newcastle upon Tyne. Yeah? That's the campus. The building on the left is the student union um, that's run by students, and you have your food, your canteen, your pubs. There are six pubs in there, actually. Um, chemical engineering is behind the red buildings that you see on the top right of the photo. When you're in Newcastle, you'll be staying in uh, university residences. Uh, there will be a range of activities um, organized for you from academic uh, activity, information skills um, activities, personal development. You also have free time to travel around. Okay, the whole purpose of this overseas immersion program is to give you uh, some experience of studying and living in Newcastle upon Tyne. This picture here is Annick Castle. That's where Harry Potter was filmed. Yeah. When you come back to Singapore after three weeks, um, you start your integrated work study program. Uh, this is where you work as a trainee engineer for 26 weeks. Um, the, the process whereby you get attached to a company is like a job application. Around January, um, companies with IWSP positions will advertise their positions in a portal and students will apply. You have three choices to make. You submit your resume, companies will select you based on interviews. I, sometimes it's two interviews. Yeah? Typically, you get an allowance of between $800 to $1,500 a month. Um, but uh, money aside, um, this IWSP is a good opportunity for you to apply what you've learned in class to a real working environment. And hopefully, uh, you learn industrially uh, relevant skills, develop professional skills, and contribute to the business of the company that you're attached to. Okay. Um, don't worry, um, the curriculum is designed so that by the end of the second year or before you get into your IWSP position, you'll be in a position to contribute to the company's business. Um, hopefully, you develop work, workplace skills uh, and enhance your employability upon graduation. Um, on the right of this slide, um, some companies that have offered uh, IWSP positions. So ExxonMobil, well, okay, it's oil and gas. Tutal, a French company, also oil and gas. But after that, everything else is not oil and gas anymore. 
MSD and GSK are pharmaceutical companies. Samcorp, Suez, uh, waste treatment companies, uh, water companies, DuPont, petrochemical, Skyworks Global Foundries are semicon uh, companies, and Asia Pacific Breweries, well, they make beer. Once you finish your IWSP, you come back to campus to do some more uh, modules and also partake or participate in this plant design project. This plant design project is a major uh, module in your degree program, in the degree program, and that's where you uh, make use of the knowledge that you gain through your lectures, uh, experiences you gain through your IWSP, and you exercise your soft skills to complete this particular project. So these are some of the projects that we offered um, last year, 2020. Um, you will be working in groups. We had around 50-odd students last year, uh, just graduated. And so we have 10 projects, so the project group will be between five and six people. Yeah? And if you look at the project titles, you see that there's only one about gas, nothing about oil. Okay? The rest are on water, energy, waste treatment, and bio stuff. Okay? This is what we expect our students to be able to do. This is a summary of a process line, a manufacturing line. You will need to be able to um, design all the units that you see there. Uh, you have to size all the pipes, define, uh, specify what kind of material you want to use. You have to specify the control system um, and the safety systems. What we expect our students to be able to do is to answer these questions. Is the process line viable? Is it safe? Is it going to be profitable? Is it going to be sustainable? So your curriculum is geared towards you being able to do this project and to answer those questions. Yeah? So who will be teaching you and training you? There will be a combination of SIT faculty and Newcastle faculty. Um, they are all experts in their respective fields and the stuff that they will teach you are all contemporary and research in form. Um, they are all based in Singapore. Um, SIT staff will be based at the Dover campus. Newcastle staff will be based at the Nian campus. All right. um, and because they are based in Singapore, um, and they are also very approachable, you can always go and see them whenever you have problems with your studies or whatever. Sometimes you all um, invite guest speakers from industry or other institutions uh, basically, we want to add diversity uh, into the curriculum and our guest speakers will add uh, practical perspectives, alternative reviews and give you advice on what's happening out in the big white world. Yeah? Um, a lot of students will be interested in how they will be assessed. Of course, you have the exams, the class tests, so these are standard things. Sometimes we have interviews as well. Yeah? Um, we will have lots of projects and assignments, uh, I won't bluff you, and most of the projects you'll be working in teams, so uh, you have to learn to work in teams as well, which is very important. But it's not all about studies, um, our students are quite active in CCA, uh, they join clubs and they do volunteering work, and all this comes under the auspices of uh, SIT organization known as Student Life. Um, we also have a student setup called the Student Management Committee and the Student Staff Liaison Committee. These are like student councils in school. Um, they are uh, the channel for communication between the student body uh, and faculty. Um, the main purpose of this is because we, are, we pride ourselves as quite student-centric and any major decisions that we make that will affect the students, we will ask the students for their opinions. Yeah? Um, we also have student mentors and student ambassadors. One of the main jobs of a student mentor, for example, is to ease the transition from pre-university to university life. So it makes your transition smoother and hopefully easier. Yeah? Okay. So what are the graduate opportunities when you finish uh, the degree program? Of course, there's oil and gas. But if you look at the list, there, there's a whole load of others. 
where uh, other sectors where you be able to um, contribute, like food, fragrances, flavors, personal care products, joining companies like Procter and Gamble, Unilever, uh, semiconductors, Micron, Global Foundries, energy, power, utility sector, waste and water treatment. We've got lots of people working in those uh, areas. And you can also join government agencies. We've got students who are working there as well, like MOM, ASTAR, NEA, PUB. Um, of course, you can join the financial and commercial sectors as well because chemical engineers are trained to look at um, lots of data and the financial sector look for people who are analytical and can deal with lots of data. All your job search will be um, supported by SIT's Center for Career Readiness. Uh, in fact, we have our own uh, career fair. We organize our own career fairs. And some of you may want to study for uh, masters or post uh, other postgraduate degrees, including doctorate programs. Yeah. Okay. In summary, chemical engineering is not simply just maths and chemistry, and it's not just limited to oil and gas sectors. The ChemEng program, SIT and U joint program. To us, it's a partnership. Uh, education is a partnership, and we want your learning experience to be good. So that's why we have this um, strong relationship with our student body. Um, it's contemporary, the cu curriculum, and we focus on sustainability, clean, clean energy. Okay. Um, you have a three weeks o overseas immersion program in Newcastle in the UK. Um, you have 26 weeks of integrated work study program. And we've already graduated 600 plus graduates since 2011, and they have good jobs. Some of them are in mid-managerial positions now. So, thank you.